Well, hello everyone. My name is Paul Kruger. I'm from JV Poindexter and Company and I've been a Quest Board member for the last five years. Uh, can you believe that we're almost through the first day of InFocus? This event has been buzzing with excitement and really has been filled with great workshops and SIG meetings. It's been a lot of fun and educational. Uh, we're really excited for you to be here and excited as always to have Oracle support and participation in this year's event, including this keynote which is titled Innovation and Di Digitization, How to Succeed in Challenging Times. And it's with Lyle Ekdahl and Paul Hoot Cooper. Lyle and Paul, thank you for being here. And I'll now turn it over to Paul to start the keynote. All right, thanks Paul, I appreciate it. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Unfocus and Vision. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Hout Cooper and I'll be emceeing today's keynote. Uh, thank you, Quest, for hosting us today and giving us this amazing opportunity to connect with our incredible ecosystem of loyal customers, dedicated partners, and committed staff. I hope you're all happy, safe, and healthy. Uh, in our session today, we're going to be covering all the updates and latest and greatest from J.D. Edwards, um, and we also have some customer stories to share about how they're using the product to support their digital strategies. Lyle, uh, today you and I will be talking about innovation and digitization, uh, how to succeed in challenging times. But uh, before we get to today's topic, uh, Lyle, did you want to share with us some recent news and talk a bit about Oracle's commitment to J.D. Edwards? Yeah, well, hello, hello, Paul, and hello to the rest of you. Um, let me start before I jump into that to give you all my welcome to the J.D. Edwards keynote. Um, as you said, our, our, succession, our uh, uh, session today um, is really going to be about succeeding in challenging times. It's going to be a fascinating session. I think we've got some good customer interaction, as you say, some stories. And it's all going to be about innovation and digitization and uh, how that should be part of your digital strategy. Um, Paul, as we said, uh, we want to approach this as more of a dialogue be between the two of us and some customers, and so fewer slides and more thought leadership, hopefully. Um, but with that, I, I can't think of anything that, that really fits into this notion more um, than what we've got to announce today. So let's start by um, announcing an extension uh, of our premier support policy on JD Edwards Enterprise One 9.2 to at least 2032. Um, and doing this now provides really our customers, um, we're showing a pattern of providing um, a good 10 years of rolling product development, new features, innovations on this continuous innovation release, which, which is 9.2. Um, and really what comes with that world-class continued Oracle Premier support. Paul, I also want to announce today um, that we went generally available with yet another one of these continuous innovation packs of both applications and tools. So uh, we're at release, and it's a little long number, 9.2.5.3. <laughs> um, but this really shows, you know, our continued commitment to tools investment in digital transformation, user experience, system automation, security, and open platforms. Plus, we have a bunch of new customer-driven enhancements that make JD Edwards applications easier to use, more powerful, and more comprehensive to support your overall business processes. Wow, that's great news, Lyle. Thank you for sharing. Looks like uh, the team and I get another, uh, another decade plus to keep innovating on this, uh, on this platform. Uh, given what we've been able to accomplish since 9.2 G8, it's pretty exciting to think about uh, what we might be able to accomplish in the next decade. So for uh, those who want more information, uh, go out and visit LearnJDE.com and find out more. Always. Yeah, always. <laughs> yep. So Lyle, uh, let's talk a little bit about the state of J.D. Edwards, uh, kind of put things in perspective for folks. Yeah, Paul, great. Um, overall, the state of J.D. Edwards and our J.D. Edwards economy is, is, is really quite strong. Um, the adoption rate of our newer products, um, commitment from customers in their investing in and deploying new product is really shown by what's, what's here on this chart, which is 75% of our customers are now on this continuous event innovation release 9.2. And as many of you know, 9.2 remains 
um, as an innovation platform where, where we have delivered a significant number of enhancements in the last five years since GA. Uh, solutions like the JD Edwards Orchestrator have gained significant traction, and we're also investing a lot into that overall digital platform. And we're exposing all of what is JD Edwards through REST-based services, enabling customers to automate and extend their solution to optimize business processes and simplify their overall user experiences. We've also seen an increasing portion of our install base moving to Oracle Cloud infrastructure and surrounding JD Edwards uh, with Oracle SaaS products as well. So just a very good, strong story here, Paul. Um, what else? on this chart jumps out at you? <laughs> well, the big old chart on the right-hand side, I would just point right. out that our uh, cumulative impact, you know, the cumulative impact of our continuous delivery model. Uh, we've been consistently delivering value quarter over quarter now for five years, and our enhancement velocity is actually accelerating. We're putting more product out the door today than we have at any point in the history of 9.2. And a lot of this investment is hyper-focused on delivering customers you know, customer-driven product improvements that eliminate pain points, and finding ways to enable our customers to adapt JD Edwards to fit their ever-changing business needs. Um, from the stories I've heard from customers uh, over this past year, this has played a real critical role in helping them to manage through, you know, the crisis. Uh, that yeah, we've so been. Paul, let me, let, let me just butt in here real quickly because I, I need to do this. You know, I get asked a lot, you know, about the state of releases for JD Edwards. And mm -hmm. with what we're doing right now, as you said, with, with our enhancement velocity and both, both coupled that with the amount of the code surface area that we're touching, which is really represented by that chart you have here on the right, what we're showing you is that each one of these updates, each, each one of these uh, feature packs that we're delivering to the marketplace can be seen as a release in and of themselves. You know, as I as I rewind the clock backward to my my beginnings, um, you know, at JD Edwards, you know, when you take when you had a look at you know like 8.9, 8.10, there wasn't as much capability that was being added to the product as what we're adding today. So really, people have to look at each one of these things as well. Absolutely, absolutely, totally agree, totally agree. So, you know, Lyle, why don't you give us your thoughts also on, you know, kind of what this last year has meant in general for businesses and 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 what you see them dealing with. Yeah, sure, Paul. It's been, a, it's been obviously been a, an extremely interesting year. Um, I think it's um, many of us are very happy to have turned the page from 2020 to 2021. Um, but I believe many folks are striving to really exit the crisis that was um, uh, you know, part and parcel of the, of the global pandemic, right? Um, and they wanna be stronger exiting than they entered, right, that period. Um, and they're looking at what's happened in this past year is really an inflection point uh, in time. Um, and they can leverage this inflection point and investments that they've made throughout this period to alter their behaviors and really shift their mindsets. What folks are recognizing is that when we have a disruption like this, it really creates a market need or promotes a, a shift, as I said, in behaviors. So rather than viewing disruption negatively as something to veer away from, um, it's something that folks are leaning into. Um, they are forcing themselves outside of comfort zones, um, you know, historical comfort zones in the hope of seizing a market opportunity and really using it as a launch pad for new products, services, and business models. So if you look back in time at recent inflection points, such as the financial crisis, previous pandemics that we've had, or technological shifts that always play into this, you'll find a ton of examples of this. You know, advances in touchless home appliances, e-commerce, transitioning to a global virtual workforce. Things of that nature are really being spawned um, by folks leaning into, into a crisis period and trying to come out stronger than they were uh, going in. Yeah, 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 I totally agree, Lyle. And I suspect that a lot of these companies, you know, that are succeeding in these times, they somehow, you know, manage to design themselves for, you know, resiliency, right? They, they're, they're, they're actually designed in, 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 in some way to be adaptable. Right. And if that's the case, um, I mean, you and I have been talking quite a bit 
you know, about this stuff. And, you know, why don't we walk through maybe some of the ways in which businesses actually do design themselves to persevere and succeed? Uh, fantastic, Paul. Let's jump into that. So I think what we're going to do today is we're going to lay out a series of, of imperatives, um, really, and then some of their elemental components. Um, and, and uh, you know, can't think of anything better to start this off with. Imp imperative number one um, is really uh, the criticality for businesses to adopt an agile mindset. Um, and what I mean by that is that a mindset that enhances the ability to pivot um, in the faces of, of change um, and then also in response um, to things such as such as discontinuities or, or crises. Um, it's not just about responding to change in that uncertain environment, however, um, it's also uh, critical um, about creating change yourself. Okay, understand what is happening in the market, how technology is advancing, and then identifying how you can not just adapt to those changes, but also drive change, right? And as most of you already know, we have been following a continuous delivery model for, for some years now, as Paul pointed out, since the GA of, uh, of 9.2. And this model, we believe, really enables us to deliver value to you, the customer, more quickly and provides the opportunity uh, for you to give us more uh, frequent feedback um, as you take on these new capabilities. Exactly, Lyle. I mean, continuous feedback from our customers and business partners enables us to switch gears and, and react quickly to, to their changing business needs and changing market needs, like you said. Um, this ultimately accelerates, obviously, the evolution of, of J.D. Edwards and our, and our entire product line. Um, but to adopt an agile mindset, I mean, when we were going through this, um, you know, we had to make a paradigm shift, right? From, from long, from, from, from just, just long-term thinking and long-term execution to sure you still keep the long-term vision, but you've got to really break that vision down into short-term executables, right? That, that really enable you to iteratively achieve that vision and, and, and like you said, as as you get feedback, you get you get it to market quicker. Get it to market quicker. You get feedback quicker. You're able to pivot quicker. Uh, you get small small wins, right? Uh, you're you're not going for the big bang. Um, and as you and I experienced during this transition, this isn't always easy. Um, customer, but customers should use what they've learned. Hopefully, this past year uh, during the pandemic, to to look at building a strategic plan for the future. Yeah, it's like anything. When you're trying to develop, you know, a strong set of behaviors, uh, uh, as you first get out of the gate, it is hard. <laughs> and you might get a little sore. <laughs> but um, I think sticking to it is what we did. And I think now, especially as we, as we went into the pandemic, we were well positioned to take advantage of things. And I think we're coming out much stronger. So overall, Paul, I think this is really great advice. Um, you know, again, we chose to, to move to that continuous delivery model to more quickly provide um, enhancements um, to, to support what we see as ever-changing business needs. Um, and, and what you were telling us, you, the customers, were, were ever-changing needs. So this continuous delivery makes it easier for you to adopt enhancements once you get to 9.2. Now, not everybody's there, but, you know, many of you are. Uh, but you have to change that mindset of what 9.2 means to you as well, right? It's, it's not a resting place, <laughs> right? Um, so, so some of you still have to do a full system upgrade, but once you're there, um, you'll learn from others, frankly, today um, that they are able to do this continuous uh, adoption much easier. So they're adopting enhancements, keeping their solution and business equipped to address unexpected um, uh, changes, um, and market demands. Yeah, very good point, good point. Um, let's see, you know, we, we talked at the beginning about the fact that we're going to go through a few customer examples, right, of, of how they uh, exemplify some yeah, of what we talked about. I, I like this one a lot. So, yeah, we were talking to PrintPak and, and, and looking at how they, how they took steps to ensure that they have the latest functionality. Um, and it's not just getting the 9.2, it's, it's, it includes an adoption strategy as well. So let's take a look at uh, what they had to say about it. Yeah, cue it up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> 
Hello, my name is Crystal Craig, and I'm the Director of Enterprise Systems at PrintPack. PrintPack was established in 1956, and we are headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. We are an industry leader in flexible and specialty rigid packaging with extensive manufacturing and converting capabilities. We specialize in packaging for food, human and pets, as well as pharmaceutical and agricultural industries. We have 19 manufacturing facilities in US and Mexico with over 3,300 associates. The business tasked us to find ways to automate transactional data and business processes wherever possible to maintain strong internal IT controls and the use of data across all of PrintPack, as well as to minimize the disturbance to our 24 by seven operation while keeping a solid foundation for integrated functions within E1. To be more proactive in our approach to supporting our business, we decided to adopt a continuous innovation model and also created a plan to stay current with J.D. Edwards on an annual basis. The value our business is seeing from this proactive approach is that we have enabled innovation and agility with improved productivity and accuracy using automations. We are also seeing improved utilization of our technical resources by leveraging native capabilities within J.D. Edwards. Improved user experience by personalizations to improve productivity, as well as reduced business operation and security risks by staying current with cyber technology. We have also minimized the business disruption and we have stable software with compatibility to third-party solutions. To summarize, we have built and continually refined a scalable and repeatable process to streamline the annual code current event. Our goal is to complete the annual event within 60 days. Wow, thank you, Crystal and Printpack for sharing your story and the benefits that you get from that continuous adoption model. So this begs the question, um, you know, you know, Lyle, why don't we do a poll here and, and ask, you know, everybody in the audience, you know, where are they at with their continuous adoption model? Are they following one uh, currently? Are they planning one, executing on one, or do they just not have plans yet? Yeah, this is a, I, I, this is a great question for everybody. So if we could cue that up. There it is. I'm planning. That's what I'm doing. Is. I'm planning. <laughs> no typo there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so who's gonna who's gonna break in with our results? Christina, is that you? I think Christina's gonna have to because I cannot actually see the polls. We need to. Do we need, for some. I saw it. it. Came up on mine. Yeah. Do we need to do a soft yeah. shoe? <laughs> All right. Maybe. Maybe as we wait for the results to to jump up here. Um. Come on. Give yeah. So I just uh, apologize well, about that typo there, but. Oh. I'd say if you guys want here, I'll go ahead. Perfect. So. Um, Right now, now what happens just when so you're being agile. shown here, 34% are saying they're planning, 11% um, okay. are saying they're implementing, 25% are saying they're executing, and 30% say they have no plans yet. Oh, that, interesting. Extremely interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, pretty pretty even across the board. That, I, mean, I, guess, I, I guess the typo shows uh, also shows what can happen when you're when you're pursuing agility because uh, we added these polls like at the last thing over this weekend. So uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know you make a mistake, but then you you, you pivot from that and you learn. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, exactly. Paul, maybe there's some calls to action that that you could go through quickly uh, based based yeah. on. Uh, our thoughts and also what we just heard from the uh, uh, from the results. Absolutely. I mean, I think the the, the key is to invest in, a con in, in invest in continuous innovation. Right. We're talking about adopting an agile mindset, but start with investing in continuous innovation. You have to commit to getting code current. But we hear it all the time. You cannot. You know, people do get code current, but then they don't adopt anything. They they, they lay in wait, and so you do have to outline time 
for adoption as well in, in your code current strategy. Uh, give yourself a chance to, to, as I was saying before, I mean, outline time, find small wins, pivot quickly, you know, that sort of thing versus um, just all this big bang all the time. And then also create a strategic plan for continuous adoption to take advantage of, of what we're delivering. Because um, as you've seen over the last five plus years, we're, we're consistently out there delivering enhancements to you every single quarter uh, for you to uptake. So um, we're, we're, we don't plan on changing that. So get on board. So is that fair, Alal? Yeah, that's fair. Good advice. Sweet. So now let's talk about uh, another way businesses design themselves to be resilient and adaptable. Um, you know, you're talking to CIOs, CEOs, CFOs all the time, Lyle. Uh, what are they telling you? Well, Paul, uh, you know, every every C level that I deal with um, indicates um, that it has become an, imper an imperative for for leaders to develop a digital strategy, right, and to take advantage of technological advances, uh, enabling their companies to remove friction reduce costs, improve decision-making, quality and velocity, okay? Uh, and when we look across the technology industry, the predominant element of any uh, digital strategy is business process automation, okay? So uh, many in the C-suite um, are really following a, a hyper automation strategy where anything that can be automated in an organization should be automated. Uh, they're leveraging capabilities such as robotic process automation to eliminate manual and or redundant tasks, uh, and really seeking ways to capitalize on efficiencies and compress business cycles. Um, one of our customers, uh, Treasury Wine Estates, uh, utilize J.D. Edwards grower and blend management modules in their winemaking operations. Okay, we, we've known them. They've been around for, for some time. Um, part of their business process is this thing known as creating and managing way tag. These are, uh, th these are ways in the operations to receive and process harvested, harvested grapes uh, from the vineyard um, and was always done as a manual process, right? It required a lot of data entry into multiple systems. Uh, and, and a lot of manual work, right? So uh, in their 2019 harvest, just to give you an example here, uh, two of their largest wineries in the Americas created over 2,500 uh, of these manual way tags, translating into about 440 hours of manual effort during the busiest time of their year. Uh, what happened was then post that is they leaned into the power of orchestration uh, and, and, and process automation. And they now automatically create these way tags into Enterprise One. Um, the orchestration itself validates the attributes of the harvest and enters the quality test results, all without the need for any manual intervention or data entry. Wow, wow. Man, that's, that's, that's funny, Lyle. I mean, what a great story. Uh, I remember I being up on a leap and difference in how they do business, right? Right, no doubt. I mean, there's there, there's just no doubt. Um, but uh, you you and I probably remember me being up on stage a few years years ago, and and somebody had me in a, a winemaker apron, uh, demoing the digital platform. I that and, was. I, <laughs> and I, I did exactly what you were just describing. I was demoing how you could actually automate that way take process. So to see Treasury do it. And, and make it a reality, um, and even finding more ways really to eliminate human error through automation and business process automation is 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 awesome. Uh, it, it makes me smile, so to speak. So, um, you know, beyond business process automation, though, another key element um, to a digital strategy is is leveraging alternate UX, right? I think as a part of that demo, we also talked about IoT and 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 whatnot. Um, so, you know, when you look at advances in IoT, mobile, 5G, uh, digital assistance, um, it, it's changing how individuals interact with the system and how they do their job day to day. I mean, IoT and 5G are changing the rate and the volume of data capture exponentially, uh, many times eliminating human error, um, you know. So, and I, and I do think that companies are realizing that, you know, bringing the system 
you know, to the user, uh, really placing the task at their fingertips can really make them more effective. Um, so, and you and I, you know, we spoke to a, a, another one of our customers recently, uh, Worthington Industries, um, about how they're leveraging uh, mobility and process automation to improve their shop floor. So why don't we, uh, do you mind if we take a look at them? No, oh, let's take a look. Worthington Industries is a leading industrial manufacturing company delivering innovative solutions to customers that span many industries, including transportation, construction, industrial, agriculture, and retail. Our cylinders division has been running JD Edwards for over 20 years and manufactures brands like Amtrol, burns o matic Balloon Time, Coleman Camping Tanks, and more. Our manufacturing facilities were tracking production and inventory using pen and paper and then transferring that to JDE at the end of the shift. Those manual and batch processes were error prone and hindered our ability to react to changes, meet customer demand, and generally from running as efficiently as possible. Four years ago, I was at the Collaborate conference, hearing all the great things happening with 9.2 and Orchestrator. From the conference, I called our team and said, this is the platform we need, we gotta upgrade. Our IT leadership and business partners agreed and we kicked off the project the following week. Since going to 9.2, mobile has been key to our strategy. We've built a suite of Android-based mobile apps to better manage our processes in real time and eliminate those manual errors. And we've expanded to do more than just inventory control. For example, we built a digital traveler mobile app that ties together the JD Edwards quality module with bill material data and product data management drawings, putting everything an operator needs at their fingertips. Our employees have adopted the mobile solutions to the point where they're now essential to running our shop floor operations to the tune of about 300,000 transactions a month. The 9.2 platform has allowed us to build a whole slew of orchestrator-based solutions. For example, we built master data management portals in React.js running as an E1 page, system-to-system -system integrations, robotic process automations, and a lot more. Orchestrator and mobile are driving changes to our business processes, and we're excited about the future. Well, that's great. That's another longtime J.D. Edwards customer, uh, leveraging the J.D. Edwards digital platform to realize digital transformation goals, um, incorporating alternative user interfaces and experiences, leaning into process automation um, at the center of their daily operations to make their shop floor users just more effective. Uh, fantastic, just a fantastic story. Okay, so a digital strategy wouldn't be complete without considering artificial intelligence. So what we all have come to know as AI ML um, is, is, is the next element here in this digital uh, approach. Um, all of our businesses um, have a growing demand for strategic data and how we use that data to automate our operations, to drive innovation, and to make smarter decisions more securely. But how do we make artificial intelligence work for your business and IT operations without leveraging J.D. Edwards data? Um, I think the goal here should be to accelerate automation, eliminate human errors, um, and get better business insight. So advances in artificial intelligence have drastically accelerated in recent years. Um, similar to ERP, um, which has transformed the back office transaction system uh, of record to a core component enabling uh, a company's technology strategy. Um, AI is no longer just a far off concept, uh, but a reality influencing everyday decisions. So today at Oracle, we are embedding machine learning algorithms within our autonomous database, um, our analytics cloud service, uh, along in our alternative UXs uh, through digital assistance and the IoT cloud service. In the case of JD Edwards, while things may not uh, natively come embedded in JD Edwards, we have a strategy that embraces um, technologies, many of them Oracle technologies, as a possible way to go forward and leverage AIML. 
Yeah, for sure, Lyle. When when customers ask me about you know artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know I think they're thinking about big data and associated analytics. Um, you know, we, they're, they're able now, you know, to compile vast amounts of data from multiple sources. We were talking about IoT and how 5G helps with that. And, and one of those sources does include J.D. Edwards. And, and often it should be a lot easier. Uh, the, the, the data collection is easy. Um, what is often most difficult is actually normalizing it, right, so that it actually makes sense and kind of iterating through the different models until you've figured out the exact you know, data you should be extracting, the model it should follow, the, and, 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 you know, what, what the point, data points get, that, that you need to give your organization insight um, and, and actually gain business value from it, right? So, you know, we, we, we talked to Car Properties. Uh, I believe they have a session here at InFocus as well this week um, and, and, and wanted to hear from them about how they've, you know, implemented, you know, and automated their lease analysis to provide real-time analysis making, you know, repetitive tasks quicker and more consistent um, than what, you know, basically humans could do, right? So they've they've made a lot of good progress on their AI strategy uh, and they gave us also kind of a, a quick update video. So why don't we hear what they had to say? Yeah, let's take a look. Hi, my name is Ilan Sakar. Chief Technology Officer of Car Properties, a privately held real estate company who owns and operates 4.4 million square feet of office buildings in Metro DC in Boston. We also have 2.4 million square feet in development projects. At Car, we have a growing demand for strategic business data. We like to automate our operations and drive innovations and make smarter decisions. We have two uh, projects that I'm going to talk to you about today. First one uh, answers the big question Will AI replace a human? And the second, is more associated with big data and analytics. Leases are not that easy to read through. They're not organized in a nice grid. They're complicated. So you can already imagine how difficult it will be to teach a machine how to read an actual lease. We take the converted PDFs and we make it identifiable text. We index the lease, we create a table of content, and we extract all the provisions similar to the way the data is organized in JD Edwards. We then leveraged Orchestrator with some custom development to extract the data into JD Edwards. And utilizing Orchestrator, it allowed us to maintain data integrity and validate all of our information. But after COVID, we have a void. We have 12 months worth of no data. As, and as Lyle said, you must pivot for competitive advantage. Without data, how can you ask the right questions? So we took our existing data from JD Edwards, compiled it with third-party information, and drilled down from a customer to an asset to a portfolio level information. The first project gave us efficiency because the data is all already in one system and uh, moves from between systems with no problem. It's reliable because it becomes our single source of truth and it's streamlined because we do not need to add more bodies as more data comes through the door. The second project adds comprehensibility because we can look at all of our information and we can really be able to analyze our information. It is quick because the machine is the one that is going to get all the information instead of a human having to research through multiple platforms and websites. And it's accurate because it gives us up-to-date information and allows us to support our rental, our rent roll forecast. So I hope I have encouraged you to consider a machine learning and an AI strategy for your business. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Elon, for sharing how Car Properties has uh, been able to advance their AI strategies utilizing the uh, JD Edwards digital platform. That's that's some amazing stuff. Um, so that you know, again, since we uh, inserted polls at the at the very last minute, uh, why don't we why don't we try another one? Um, we've gone through another. several different. What's that? Let's try another one. <laughs> yeah, let's roll the dice on another one. You know, we talked about several different technologies. Uh, being part of a digital transformation strategy, whether it be process automation, IoT, mobile, digital assistance, uh, AI, ML, or, you know, and whatnot. Um, why don't we find out from uh, our customers how many are, uh, you know, using any of these or have leveraged any of these technologies or, you know, perhaps don't, do not have a strategy yet. All right. So those those popped right up. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll give you, give you a second or two here to, to, to quickly respond. 
Um, six choices this time. Unfortunately, you don't get multiple choice here. So you have to pick one. <laughs> I think that's the case. So, Christina, do you oh, yeah, want to? That would have been a good thing. We could have, should have thought that one yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, well, again, I, hey, we're learning. This is, this is about being agile. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm happy to say that 56 or 61% are saying process automation um, no is currently part of it. Um, you know, low, the next one, surprisingly, is 18% saying no strategy yet. And then right. everything, let's see, mobile's currently at 7%. AI ML is at 6%, okay. IoT is at 5 and digital assistance at 3 but um, everybody, I guess, is now wanting to tune in because it's they're starting to pop up a little bit quicker now. So okay. maybe let's give it another 30 seconds and we'll give the official okay. results. All right. Well, why don't we do this, Paul? Why don't, why, don't, why don't you go through another set of calls to action here? Um, okay. And then we'll pause there and Christina break in with the, with, with the final vote tally. Sure. Sure. I mean, imperative number two, obviously, outline your own digital transformation strategy. Um, you need to consider out process automation, alternate user experiences, and AI ML can actually help you rethink how you do business. Um, and, and as you heard in, in, in all the stories that we went through, um, leverage Orchestrator in the J.D. Edwards digital platform as your enabler to do so. Right. There, there are many customers having success with this today. Um, so if you're not, you know, pursuing a strategy, if you haven't outlined one yet, haven't looked at these things, by all means do so because it's it's well within your grasp um, today with J.D. Edwards. So do we have a final tally there, Christina? Yeah, let's go ahead and file in final here. So which of the technologies just discussed is currently part of your digital transformation? 60% um, are saying process automation. Okay. We got eighteen percent saying no strategy yet. We've got uh eight percent saying mobile, and we have a tie for six percent for IoT and AI ML. And okay. coming in last is digital assistant with three percent. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks. Well, as you said, oh, yeah, very well. As you said at the beginning, uh, the the predominant trend that we that that we saw when talking to you know C level you know, was, was still process automation. That yeah. was the number one, number one, you know, element, yeah, so to speak, right of, of the history. So, okay. Very cool. All right, well, we've covered a couple imperatives, right? Uh, on how businesses design themselves to survive and thrive uh, in a time of crisis. Uh, first, adopting an agile mindset. And then of course, you know, we just talked through developing a digital strategy. Um, I noticed we haven't mentioned cloud yet, Lyle. Um, so does cloud fit in the picture? Yeah, this is going to be our, this is going to be our imperative number three with a bullet. Um, imperative number three, embrace a cloud culture. Um, you know, I would say that, that doing that, uh, you know, for businesses who want to take advantage of the disruption to change and, and how they do business, uh, nothing speaks that, uh, like sort of the the the, the speed and the and, and frankly the ability to be agile. Nothing says that better than than cloud. I mean, it's a proven enabler for creating competitive advantage, and we saw a lot of that through this last year with the pandemic, um, because organizations that have geared themselves towards cloud and cloud solutions are able to adjust to changing market demands and unforeseen events. Uh, that have economic impact quicker than those that are not embracing cloud. We, I, I mean, we just saw it um, yeah. last year. No doubt, no doubt, fair point. I know, uh, you know, we've been doing quite a bit lately to enable J.D. Edwards customers to, to maximize value from Oracle's overall investment in, in JDE as well as the cloud. Um, and we've seen a lot of customers uh, experiencing accelerated growth, lowering TCO, and getting improved performance after moving to OCI and exiting the data center business. I mean, you know, we, we hear it all the time. I mean, IT departments rechanneling their resources to engage, you know, with the business differently and trying to reimagine how they, how they operate. Right. Yeah. So that, so that it, that's exactly Paul, that sort of that lift and shift, get, get it onto a modern architecture 
um, you know, a modern platform. That, that's what OCI is. I mean, th that is becoming the platform of choice for so many of our customers. Not that we're not going to, you know, still support, um, uh, you know, a variety of platforms, but that is, that is quickly becoming a, prior, uh, a platform of choice. Um, I would also point that the other big trend that we see uh, in the JD Edwards install base is what we call a surround strategy. So um, surrounding JD Edwards, um, as you look beyond sort of the core into maybe more um, uh, uh, market um, touching kind of applications um, or those that, that need to move quickly, um, adopting cloud apps there, HCM, uh, EPM, um, all being used to extend Enterprise One 9.2 for enhanced visibility and, and insight. Um, so it really sets up this hybrid cloud environment. So hybrid cloud serves our customers' requirements uh, in a lot of different ways, right? Location, flexibility, control. Um, they, they don't have to sacrifice performance, right? Security and value at the same time. So it, it allows them to accomplish a strategy, put in place the elements they need to be successful um, and keep, keep the engine humming, I guess. Um, now for those that want to continue on a cloud journey, and we see, we're starting to see that too, right? They are slowly but surely taking what is an edge strategy and they sort of compress that in into the set center. And that's certainly how we we were building our solutions. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, if somebody wants to uh, take that approach with Oracle SaaS applications, uh, we, JD Edwards is geared to enable that. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, customers surrounding JDE and, and, and Oracle, you know, with Oracle Cloud Apps and extending, you know, 9.2 for enhanced visibility and insight. You know, we, we have another customer, Blattner Company, um, is doing just that. That's doing just that. Uh, their Enterprise One solution is delivered via OCI, and they are enabling it with or extending it with Project Supply Chain Cloud. Uh, that should enable their field to focus on construction and proactive planning and, and, and also stay in sync with real-time updates and delivering on time and in budget. Uh, they're also leveraging forecast, bomb, and system data to drive project savings. So they, they are already predicting uh, some significant measurable savings this next year. Um, and this will be integrated, you know, best in class supply chain management system. Uh, one that is, you know, able to access consistent and accurate data to drive their business decisions, access vendors and suppliers and standardized processes so that they are repeatable. So another great customer story. Uh, you know, kind of validating, you know, what, what we've been experiencing and what we've been describing and seeing, um, you know, these last few years. So, you know, this, this once again, we'll roll the dice um, and, and ask, you know, our customer base here, how many of you are leveraging Oracle's investment in cloud, um, either through OCI, uh, SaaS, or PaaS? So either you're using cloud infrastructure, Oracle SaaS, Oracle PaaS, or perhaps you have no no cloud investment yet. So Christina, could we roll that poll? Yeah, and while you're voting on that, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll underscore this is, uh, I mean, it's obviously an Oracle investment, but it's a JD Edwards investment as well. Um, you know, we, we have put a lot of effort into making our solution um, extremely um, uh, uh, robust when it comes to deploying Oracle's cloud infrastructure. Um, we are, frankly, have taken up a lot of Oracle technologies at the pass layer and extending that in, in, into SaaS. So this is not just, a, you know, a separate investment that goes on over here. This is, this is also core to, to, to your J.D. Edwards investment. So just for everybody, the poll is up and um, it looks like we've got a pretty steady, looks like nobody else is responding right now. So go ahead and give you guys about 10 more seconds while I read just the title here. But how many of you are leveraging Oracle's investment in cloud, either through OCI, SaaS, or PaaS? Um, so right now we have 75% saying no cloud investment, 21% saying cloud infrastructure, 4% saying cloud SaaS, and 1% saying Oracle PaaS. All right. 
That's an interesting reading from the install base. Probably not too unpredictable at this point. Uh, certainly, yeah, what, what we've seen in the, in the data is cloud infrastructure uh, a lot. Um, no, no, no plan is kind of interesting. <laughs> I guess we should have had an other in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll learn from that. All right. So, Paul, right. why don't you kick us into a call to action then as it relates to, to adopting our uh, a cloud culture? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to recognize, uh, you know, the value of your J.D. Edwards solution and, and the continued investment that we're making, uh, you know, in, in cloud as well. Uh, embrace a cloud culture and develop your strategy. I mean, as we see, a majority of people have, have, have essentially not gone there yet. Um, and, and then partner with Oracle to help evolve your go forward plan, um, you know. So. I think, uh, Lyle, I mean, that's, that's three imperatives down. Um, and, and I think, uh, I think maybe there we have it, right? Uh, yeah, the playbook, so. you know, the playbook, if you will, for, uh, trying to design yourself to be, uh, resilient and adaptable, right? Uh, we talked about investing, uh, in a continuous innovation or investing in continuous innovation, sorry, with an agile mindset. Uh, develop a strategy for transforming your business from analog to digital by taking advantage of business process automation, augmenting your, you know, augmenting your user experiences, uh, pursuing AI and ML, right? And then finally, you know, adopting a, a, a cloud culture, right? As you've seen, you know, you know, it's very possible, uh, to, to, to make progress on all three of these imperatives. We have plenty of customers out there doing this. Uh, we've we've highlighted a few today. I would I would definitely encourage you guys to uh, to get to to go talk to them. Um, so, and then the other thing, um, not only is you know are these imperatives you know driving people's ability to you know design themselves to to take advantage of of the inflection point that that we talked about, but you know, we realize that, and therefore, this is what's really driving our goals, right, Lyle? I mean, this is what's driving our roadmap um, and, and our ongoing investment in the, in, in the JDE digital platform, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean this, we, is, this is the future. It's the future of business, and it's the future of JD Edwards, right? It's, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, we, we are an open system, and, and, and we want to enable you to, to realize your digital transformation goals. Right, uh, and we want to be at the heart of that. So, the other thing I would I would uh, throw out there is uh, remember uh, we also have an Apps Unlimited, a dedicated Apps Unlimited Salesforce. Right, uh, this came on a few years ago, and and whatnot, and they are in the exhibitor hall today. So you know, and throughout the week. So, so you know, as a call to action, if you're not on 9.2 and you want to upgrade. Or let's say you are on 9.2 already, but you know you you want to adopt some of the key capabilities like uh, JVM or health and safety, uh, one view reporting, um, or say you're interested in migrating to OCI or exploring a SaaS surround strategy that 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 Lyle was talking about. Uh, I'd encourage you to uh, contact your AU sales rep or go talk to them in the exhibitor hall this week and get more info. So, right. And then, of course, while you're and at then, it, um, we've got more sessions, right? So um, this week, so obviously a, a, attend those. Um, but we've got some some pretty strong ones, right? Some pretty good ones that we think are critical, right, Paul? So what are those? Yep. Well, I would go talk to you know Keith and Jeff about the you know the the strategy. Go see the strategy and roadmap session. Find out how you know the product group is 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 making all this possible, right? You know what are the investments that we're making in the digital platform? Uh, how are we optimizing the applications? How are we automating, you know, your your system administration? Um, and then of course attend the executive ask me anything forum uh, later this week. I believe that's happening Thursday. So yeah, yeah, good advice. And then you know before you know before we wrap. You know, I do want to also uh -oh, not go to the <laughs> screen. There we go. Uh, I want to thank our customers uh, for sharing their stories today um, and, you know, kind of do a, a little plug for their sessions as well. You know, print back. 
you know, Prep Pack has their story, Worthington, um, as, as well as Carr. Thank you guys again, all of you, for sharing your stories with us, uh, being, being willing to participate in this. And then, um, you know, good luck in your sessions. I hope everybody comes and sees you guys. Yeah, and then if you if you come see this and you and you learn something compelling for your business, and then uh, you execute Q that over the next year, uh, then you too uh, maybe can have your business uh, highlighted um, during the keynote. Absolutely, I'd be incentive for some of you. Yep, motivation. And then finally, um, as always, obviously, <laughs> what's that? I said as always. As always, this is this is like the the, the final slide of, of of this is our close all the time. Stay connected. Um, as as we mentioned earlier, you know, go out to learn JDE. Um, it's it, you know, learn about 9253. Learn about all the application enhancements as well as the tools enhancements that we just put out this last quarter. Um, stay in touch with us on 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 social. We're we're out there on many mediums. Uh, you can learn something weekly. Uh, you know, about what's going on for sure. Um, so please stay connected with us. So. Great. Thank you very much, Paul and Lyle, for taking the time to present yeah. with us and joining us for J.D. Edwards In Focus and Vision. Um, a lot of great stuff that you guys shared in the roadmap um, ahead of us. For folks that are still on the phone, um, we also dropped in the Ask Me Anything interactive J.D. Edwards discussion. Um, we are going to take some pre-questions, so feel free to drop those questions in or any follow-ups that you have from this session. Feel free to drop in as well as the survey link for you to tell us a little more about what you thought about the session. Um, again, thank you guys for joining us today. Lyle, Paul, and the whole J.D. Edwards team, thank you guys for participating with us. Always a pleasure to have you guys in focus. Love the costume changes, the interaction, and appreciate the whole team being with us and look forward to see what else is uh, to come this week. Everybody have a great day. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. everybody. Take care.